Sabbath peace. It's another Sabbath opportunity peace. for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. <laughs> we know all honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or gift of prophecy, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in, and uh, no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open it up to Genesis uh, chapter 50. So last week, we talked about uh, Joseph going into Egypt, being sold by his brothers. We looked at how he represents Yahushua in those situations. Um, and one of the last things he, he left off with were when his brothers, you know, they felt guilty about what they did to him. And they saw that he was in the position of rulership and had mercy on him. And when their dad died, they were looking like, oh, Joseph, just don't turn on us, right? You know what I'm saying? Pops, you know what I'm saying? They came to us like Pop said, you know what I'm saying? Pop said, leave us alone. You know what I'm saying? We sorry about what we did, but Pop said, leave us alone. So uh, and uh, let's read it, actually. This is uh, the Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. I had to go back to that thing. It's one of my favorites. In Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. And when Joseph's brother and saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will, peradventure, hate us and will certainly require us all the evil which we did unto him. Unto all right, him. so the brothers were looking like, yeah, you're going to mess around and hate us. And then he's going to try to get us back for everything that we did to him. All right? Go ahead. Sorry. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. Uh-huh. And his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be your servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am, for I, am I in the place of God. All right, so you remember the prophecy, that, or not prophecy, the dream that, uh, that Joseph had was that it was a dream that, that represented all his brothers would be bowing down to him. And so we see yet again this happened. All his brothers bowed down to him, right? And when he did, he's looking like, Am I in the place of God? Right? Am I in the place of God? Watch what he say. Powerful statement. But as for you, you thought evil against me. He said, you, when you was running your mouth, and when y'all when y'all was doing what y'all was doing, y'all thought, y'all was thinking evil. Right? That's what y'all had in y'all mind. Evil. What else? But God meant it unto good to bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive. He said, God, you use y'all evil mind to bring something good. Right? That's the same thing we see throughout the book, right? Even, even after this, We'll see the children of Israel go into, into Egypt, right? And Pharaoh thought evil, but God used it for good, right? Then we go into, uh, we go into to the wilderness. We got certain of our brethren that thought evil, but God used it for good, all right? Even in the wilderness, we have some enemies that we go up against. God used it for good. We get to the king of Assyria, right? King of Assyria thought evil, God used it for good. King of Babylon thought evil. God used it for good, right? And so that's constantly the position that, that we all have a choice to put ourselves in. We can put ourselves in an evil mind, but no matter what, it's going to work out to the good, right? That's what Paul means when he said, all things work out for good for those who love. What is it? Those who love God? For the most part, paraphrase, right? Where is that at? Romans 8? I don't know. Well, I, I, I think it's in Romans at all. No, I don't think so, but I'm not sure. I'm about to take a quick stab at it. Let me make sure. I know Romans eight verse twenty six is talking about hope, or I want to say that's talking about hope. If it were gonna happen, I would say it's gonna be after that. What's the last verse of Romans eight? Thirty nine. Give me Romans eight verse. Let's just 
started 22. So I feel like it'll be after that. So it'll be there. You're probably. Yeah. Yeah. Something will be there. It came to mind. Likewise. Romans 8, chapter 26. Like Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise. Excuse me. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us through which groaning, with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that scattered the hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You're all right. right. So all right. things work together for the good for everybody who loves God and is called towards his purpose. All right, so we have, to, we have to be able to put ourselves in a position that we are not thinking evil, right? If we're thinking evil, if our intentions are evil and we're not living a, a called life, a life called to God, and we're not loving God, which means we've got to keep his commandments, right? If we don't put ourselves in that position, then we put ourselves in the same position as the brother and we'll end up bowing down to the son, right? Unwillingly, right? We want to be able to bow down to the son in honor where we share some of his glory, and the rest of the world bow down to us, right? But that's what it comes down to. When you look at, when you look at Joseph, that's how he represents Yahushua. He was someone who was wronged, and because of his faithfulness, he was awarded the, the authority to make decisions over other people, right? So that's what we look for. That's the best we can hope for. Let's go back. This is Genesis uh, chapter 50. Give me verse, whatever we left on. 19. 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for I am not, fear not, for am I in the place of God? Mm -hmm. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring pa to pass as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the land of the third generation. Ephraim was his son. We we skipped over some stuff. We uh we should we should end up going back. You know when we run across certain things, we get to talking about the tribes a little more. But we skipped over some stuff. But Ephraim is one of Joseph's sons. He was his first son. I'm sorry. He is his second. He is his uh, second born son. All right, keep going. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Maker, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. So now he has another son named Manasseh, right? And Manasseh had children, right? So he's saying the children of, Joseph, uh, of uh, Manasseh's children, right? So that's four generations already, right? Keep going. Three generations from him. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Right? So when Joseph was running out, he talking about God will surely come. Right? God going to surely come and take you up out of here. How Joseph going to know something like that unless he, unless he paid attention to what Abraham was talking about? All right? Remember, we read, when we read about Abraham... Abraham said that. Or most High God said that to Abraham. That's what we learned from Abraham. All right? You remember when we read um, about him and Lot, right? And he asked Lot, he was like, man, just, you know what I'm saying, take whatever side you want because they start, they start kind of fighting. They people start fighting because there was too many of them in one area. And so they were like, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and take what side, you know what I'm saying, Lot, you choose what side you want and I'll take whatever's left. So Lot chose his, you know what I'm saying, ended up being Sodom and Gomorrah that got himself into some mess. And he took whatever's left. Most High God told him, you go ahead and walk the land. You know what I'm saying? All that, I'm going to give it to you. All right, grab, grab it real quick. This is Genesis chapter 13. All right, throughout the book, all these promises that were made in the beginning, you'll start to see them start to be fulfilled. And to me, the reason why the, the line of men that we read about, the reason why this line is important, because these are men of faith. All right? And when their father said something, they stuck with it because they knew their daddy represented the most high God. Right? If I know my daddy walk, walk, rep, walk and, and, and represented the most high God, when he say something, I'm sticking with it. Right? And so that's what they did. They stuck with it. Like, oh, that's what Pop said. That's it. 
I got that. What, what else are we going to do? Right? This is uh, Genesis chapter 13. Give me verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Abram, after that, Lot was separated from him. Lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land which you see, to thee will I give it, and to your seed forever. And I will make your seed of the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall your seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abraham removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre. All right, so he looked. He just told him, look, north, west, east, south, all that I'm going to give it to you. Then he said, go ahead and walk it. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm going to give to you. All right? So, you know I mean? You just stand out and you got, you know, just open, just open land. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no building, no houses, all that. You just got open land. And you just look out and you see all this stuff. Most I got to say, everything you see, that's yours. That's what later becomes Yisrael. So that's what Joseph is talking about. He is like, man, I know for sure. I know the promise. Joseph don't know nothing. In Joseph's position, they live in good in Egypt. Joseph running the show in Egypt. They live in good in Egypt. Nevertheless, when he died, he's like, I still already know we getting up out of here. Because there's a promise hanging. Right? There was already a promise hanging. And our people, we passed down our stuff. We, we told our kid, man, your great-great-grandfather, his name was Abraham. That man, I'm telling tell you, that's a man there. Let me tell you what God told him. Then your, your, your great-grandfather, oh yeah, his name, his name was Isaac. You know what I'm saying? Him? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, man, listen. Look. And then let me tell you this, right? And then you just go all the way down the line so that when we're talking about our kids, we can look back and we know what promises linger, right? We know what the Most High God told our people, all right? So we keep on going with that, all right? So that's what Joseph was talking about. Joseph said, you know what? We getting up out of here, and when we do, I need you to get my bones up out of here, too. No, Egypt was nice. I, you know, Egypt was good. They did good to us. But let me, I, just, I need my bones up out of here, though. Go ahead and get my stuff. Take me back, uh, take me back to where we're going. You know what I'm saying? A place that we can call home. All right? So that's what we look at. This is uh this is uh, Exodus chapter one. Let's go, let's get into it. It's Exodus chapter one, give me verse one. I'll try to read on through. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. These are the names of the children of Israel. Hold on. A little, put a little bit of room on them things. That way, that when we as, as we go through the book, you know what I'm saying, we can kind of like line people up up under them. You know what I'm saying? We're going to write down the names. That way we can go through them. These are the names of the children of Israel. You got to start with Reuben. Reuben. It's a car. This boy got some difficult names to spell. Mm-hmm. Zebulun. Is that a bike? No, it's a car. <laughs> Benjamin. Dan. Gad. What I got up here. And Asher. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were seventy souls. Wait. We'll go back with Joseph. We got to break Joseph down. You know what I'm saying? So we'll go back because Joseph was split out. We is, he is split out in the two. So we'll, we'll go back on him. Uh, we won't do it today out of the week. We'll go back probably when, when, you know what I'm saying? whenever we run across something, but we have to. Boy, if you don't get out of here making all that darn noise, what's wrong with you? Is that that making that noise? It was him? Knock it off. <laughs> uh, 
So we we uh we 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 want to make sure that we understand the name because all this stuff that has, it ties in the history that we're gonna be reading about, all right? So we want to get the names. We're gonna try to you know what I'm saying kind of call back to these names a little bit and make sure uh make sure we connect it to the history of our people. So this is uh, Exodus chapter one, verse whatever we just left off on, verse three maybe two five verse five. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. All right, so it was 70 souls that came out of the loins of Jacob. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Joseph was already there. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty. They had a whole lot of babies. And the land was filled with them. Now, filled up the land. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. All right, so the Pharaoh... That was with Joseph and gave Joseph all the power, put Joseph in control, told Joseph, you can run all of Egypt, right? Joseph was running the whole show. Joseph died. That Pharaoh also died. After that, a new king comes up. A new Pharaoh comes up. He said, I don't know nothing about Joseph, right? That's Donald Trump, right? You, before that, you had, you know what I'm saying, you had like some other type of character, you know what I'm saying, whatever president you like, you know what I'm saying? Me particularly, you know what I'm saying? Obama ain't the one I choose, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? Whatever your favorite president, whatever one you thought was good to the people, you know what I'm saying? He was in office. And after that, he left. Then Donald Trump came. He was looking like, we got to build a wall. You know what I'm saying? He was looking like, he was looking like listen, there's a whole lot of these folks around here. We got to build a darn wall. All right? Watch what Donald Trump said. Now, <laughs> there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Uh -huh. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Right? Ain't that what Donald Trump said? He's like, there's a whole lot of these Mexicans here. He said, what Donald Trump? He said, they taking some jobs right now. Watch what he said. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falls out any war, they join also unto our enemies. He said, they're going to be working against, against them. That don't make no sense. He's like, we got all these Hebrews in here. We going to mess them around. They gon' they gonna deal evil with us. They gonna be work. Somebody gonna come against us, and they gonna be the first one and be like, "All right, we with you. Let's take over Egypt." He's like, "That thing don't make a whole lot of sense to me. This our country, All right? This our country. What I'm gonna let? What I'm gonna let a whole bunch of Hebrews multiply, take over the land? They full of the land. They almost outnumbering us." He said, "That don't make no sense." Let's see what he did about it. And get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Uh -huh. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. That's what our people be built. Don't let these Egyptians lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Or fake Egyptians lie to you. Our people built that stuff. Keep going. Not all of it, though. A lot of people try to say we built the pyramid. I don't know about that part. You know what I'm saying? But we sure built up some of these cities that are still famous right now. All right? Keep going. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. In other words, we had a rough job. We had hard labor that we had to do. Right? They gave us the worst of the job. Right? And they made it tough, difficult for us for that reason. Right? To keep us in bondage. Right? That means that we are getting paid low. Right? So we had, we had, we had very difficult labor, right? And we can imagine that the pay was low, right? Or, or non-existent to keep us in a place of poverty and to keep us oppressed, to keep us afflicted, right? Keep going. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools if it be a son then ye shall kill him. Alright? Now you're trying to kill a, trying to kill a darn kid. Alright? Because the reason why if you look at it you say these people we have to stop them. Right? We have to keep these people down. It's oppression. It's no different than what's going on here. Right? It's oppression. You can't have these people multiply doing too much moving around too much. Right? These people come into our land, and we brought them here as slaves. All right, these people are slaves. What it look like if they start getting too much population? 
No, we gonna put a, you know what I'm saying? We gonna make sure we put a couple uh Planned Parenthood or whatever they call it inside of their neighborhood. All right? I'll go ahead and get on this birth control. All right? You don't need to be having no darn babies. Let me keep you poor. All right? You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to give you the same opportunities as everybody else. That thing don't make no darn sense. It's our country. Right? That's what these white folks is out there protesting about right now. They're like, this is our country. Right? A lot of, a lot of these white folks, they ain't scared to say it. They're like, this is our country. This thing don't make, that thing make per. That thing logical if you, I mean, if you look at it from their point of view, that thing logical. This is our country. We, br we brought y'all here. How y'all going to sit here and act like y'all got some rights? You know what I'm saying? Y'all do what y'all do. Don't marry our women. You know what I'm saying? Y'all do it all. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them ain't even talking about killing us. Now, behind closed doors, they might be. You know what I'm saying? But out publicly, they're like, man, I ain't, I ain't trying to kill y'all. I just want y'all to stay over there. You know what I'm saying? We're going to stay over here. And y'all do whatever y'all do. Just don't mess up nothing we got going on. It makes sense from their point of view. Right? This is how they is operating. They're looking like, look, man, these Hebrews, we got we to gotta find something to keep these Hebrews from messing up what we got going on. Remember, Egypt run everything. They, they own everything. They're an empire at this point, based off of our knowledge that came from the Most High God. Right? Same thing with this country. How many inventions, how many, how many millionaires, how many, how many billion dollar countries, I mean, companies, is up and running today because of our knowledge, because of our work? What do you think, Wells Fargo is Wells Fargo just because it's Wells Fargo? I was going to say Wells Fargo. What do you think, J.P. Morgan Chase is J.P. Morgan Chase just because it's J.P. Morgan Chase? U.S. Steel. You think U.S. Steel is U.S. Steel just because it's U.S. Steel? That's crazy. That's crazy. All these inventions that these people get praised for, you look behind it, you got a, they, they got a picture of a little black boy just right, working in the back, smiling on camera. We put this stuff together, right? They get the benefit of it. They looking like, you know what I'm saying? I know the benefit of the people, but at the same time, we not going to let these people overtake us. This is our country. That makes sense, right? It's our country. Now, I like, I like your services now, but since you so talented, you going to have to stay where you at, right? It's no different. It's what we looking at in Hebrew. I mean, uh, in, uh, we've been through this before. Right? It's not the first rodeo. We've been here before. We just don't know our history. We look in our history to give us a whole lot more paper. All right? When we out here and we, we out here running our mouth, we running our mouth about the right thing. We talk, most High God told us to, to fight for the old press. That's what we look at. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing we should be fighting for. All this other stuff, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, give us us free. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no time for that. Most High God going to give us that. Y'all just stop treating these poor people. Right? I'm going to speak out against oppression. You know what I'm going to speak out against injustice. That's what the book called me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no time to be sitting here, you know what I'm saying, playing y'all political games. I ain't got no, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. Right? Read the book, let's see. What did you say? What did you say? They're they about to kill the Hebrew babies? The, the boys only? Yeah. I mean, because, I mean, when you got that autism, you know what I'm saying, that work out, it's prevalent in the black boys, they say. And you know what else? They say, I mean, only the black boys, for some reason, when you give them these vaccines, you know what I'm saying? They had to blow, what they call them, whistleblowers? They had to blow the whistle. They said, they said, you know, there was evidence that showed that there is a higher propensity that young black boys, specifically, for some reason, young black boys will get autism more often by taking these vaccines. That's crazy as only the black boys. That day don't make no sense to me. Only the black boys? They found that out. Guess what they did? No, we cannot make it. No, they swept that thing right under the rug. That's all right. Keep going. Go ahead, go ahead and track that. Keep producing. That thing ain't hurt nobody. Nobody got offended. With that. Nobody even stopped. Nobody batted an eye. Only young black boys. My boys, all right. That's all right. Delete that file. Let's keep moving. One sign to thank the thank the Most High God for putting it on his heart. You know what I'm saying? One time he said he kept that thing. He kept that thing. Years later, God felt guilty and gave it up. You know what I'm saying? That thing ain't make no news. Ain't nobody talk about it. Don't nobody care nothing about what it our boys go through. Because it's, it's a consistent. Right? You see these kids, these kids, I was watching a video like last week. You know what I'm saying? They walk right into a house. They walk right into a house with a young, or with a gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Older man. Walk right into the house. Pull out a gun. Police. 
pull out a gun, shoot the man in the chest. Shoot him in the chest. Kill him. He said, oh, I meant to pull my taser. These people are insane. No, no punishment, no conviction. At the very least, I don't care who you are, you meant to pull your taser. That you unfit. You unfit for the job. At the very least, you unfit for the job. Now these people going home with pay. They suspended. They going home with pay. That thing crazy. I can't say a you say a cuss word on your job, you get suspended without pay. Right? You show up late too many times on your job, you get suspended without pay. You mean to tell me on your job you can kill somebody and still get paid for it? You can get to, you. In other words, you can go on vacation for killing a black man? That sounds real nice. It was a woman that got stopped in the airport, white woman. You know what I'm saying? Got stopped in the airport, and the police officer just completely improper. improper. Police officer wrestled her down, you know what I'm saying? Wrestled her down, and you know what I'm saying? It was an airport, you know what I'm saying? A big thing all over the news. Rest her down, threw her to the ground, just being unnecessarily rough with her. You know what happened to that police officer? What? The butt got fired. Right away. No, it wasn't no long waiting period. He wrestled a white woman down, your butt out of there. Tell me which one of these cops got fired for shooting our people. All the cops, all the ones I can think of, quit. They ain't get fired. They, it wasn't nothing, no stain against their record. They can come back whenever they want. They decided to quit. Because they knew, they knew what the repercussions was. Of, oh, you know, next time they pull over a black person, something might happen to their butt. Right? They looking like, oh, I can't deal with this. Too much media coverage. Right? I was on national news killing this black person. They decided to quit with their bonuses and all that, and they keep moving. You rest with this white woman, oh, that's it. You, that butt's gone. Right? It's a difference. They don't care. So the life doesn't matter. Just like for the Pharaoh, life didn't matter for the young, young black boys. Pharaoh looking like, man, get these young black boys up out of here. Pharaoh was black too, right? They were all black, so he wouldn't have looked at it black, but he didn't get these people boys up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Don't let them boys live. We got to control this population, right? But that's what we were. We were servants. We weren't children to them, right? We were servants. Keep going. That's how the Most High God sounds too. That's why the Most High God, we're going to read it. Most High God going to say, bring them out. He was like, bring my son out. Right? He called whole, all of Israel his son. He was like, bring my son out so he can serve me. Grab uh, Genesis, uh, not Genesis, Galatians for me. It's Galatians chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Oh, we got there in Genesis. We coming back. Galatians what? It's Galatians chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Hey, uh, this on some water. Let me get that one. Zara, right, bring me a bring me a water if you don't mind, son. You keep looking at me like no. Now, the heir, as long as he is a child, he differs said, I not. I say the heir, the heir is a, you know what I'm saying, the heir is, you know what I'm saying, a, a child, right? He came, he's the one that's going to be next to the throne if you talk about a king. You know what I'm saying? So he said the heir is what? As long as he is a child. As long as the heir is a child. Differeth nothing from a servant. He said he's still a servant. Though he be lord of all. Right? He said this heir that's going to end up being the king over everybody, when he a kid? He the same as a servant. Well, get, get your butt up in there and clean that bathroom. What's wrong with you? You hear that, son? You lost that book, boy. You see that? You serve. That thing book. You do them dishes, boy. <laughs> I appreciate it. Technically, I ain't even got to tell you thank you. Technically. Thank you. Okay. Right? We look at these things. That's book. That's why the Most High God said, y'all serving him. But no, come and serve me. You don't see the most I got come and give me a hug. No, 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 no. Bring him over there and serve me. Because Israel was a child still. He said it was only 70 of us. You know what I'm saying? You look at it from, from God's span, he's like, y'all still killed. You know what I'm saying? Y'all still, y'all just got born. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead. No, y'all bring these out so they can serve me instead. Right? He said, different not. King of Egypt trying to get rid of us, though. 
Most I got didn't take too kind of that. Let's read. This is uh, Exodus chapter 1. Let's get back. What were we going for? Like 15? 16. 16. This is Exodus chapter 1, verse 16. Thanks, nephew. Might have a nice little career as an usher. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Remember the usher, you know what I'm saying? He's all you, you got the real professional type ones. You walk with one hand behind their back, you know what I'm saying? Got on the white glove. You know what I'm saying? Usher's really tight though. Right. Uh, show you. Yeah, show you to your seat, hold the door open for you, give you a couple pamphlets. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that. I just would to God that we all had the, you know what I'm saying, we all had the mind to serve the right thing. You know what I'm saying? The humility it takes, you know what I'm saying? That's, ain't nothing wrong with that at all. You know what I'm saying? It's just the only thing that's wrong is that we end up serving something that's, that's wicked, serving something that's deceitful, Man. serving something that's not serving God. It'd be, it's an honor to be an usher, for, a servant for the Most High God, to show God's people to their seat. All right? It's an honor to open the door for God's people, hand God's people a pamphlet either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you better take that darn tie and the little out of there. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see you them. You ever see one of them there? Like two or three ties in the little? Well, yeah. I'm like, how many ties do we need? He be lighting our people like, up. Like, like, that's the no tie envelope. Yeah, yeah, I think they be like, listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, I got paid one time this week. What y'all talking about? Three different ties envelopes. Now I got to split up my $20 that I already planned to give. Yeah, as a member next year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I used to just drop that thing in there. I used to think I was doing something by not putting it in there because I always felt like you put it in there, you want not afford it. Nah, you just put the, you put the $20 bill just right in the basket. God, you know, you let God have the word. That's the thing. You drop that thing in there and feel real good about yourself. Too. You know what I'm saying? I remember Friend, that. You know what I'm saying? I used to feel like that too. Feel out no I didn't do that when you come back to me. That whole time I was gambling. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Put that thing in there. That thing gonna come back at 40. You know what I'm saying? How many fold passages say? It's gonna come back to me. How many fold? A hundred fold? I might just put another five in there. You know what I'm talking about? That's how you gotta do it. You gonna mess us up. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women. And see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, uh -huh. but saved the men children alive. And the, king of, and the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the Grab uh, Psalm 73 for me. Psalm 73 verse 1. Midwife wouldn't go along with they're trying to kill our babies. Midwives wouldn't go along with it. They look like, listen, they gave him an excuse. We ain't read it. They gave him an excuse. They're like, he Hebrew with you, man. They had their baby too quick. All right, they had their baby too quick. They come right on out. Just, you know what I'm saying? Most of God looked after the, the, the midwives, though, for doing that. protecting our, our children. That got to be our heart, though. Our heart got to be to protect the people. Protect the people that's out here being oppressed. People that ain't out here, they ain't got no father. Little kids, they ain't got no father. They ain't got no, 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 no moms or nothing. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure that that's our heart. That we, that we, can, that we can fight to, to establish something for them. Right? Most of our God is good to us. That don't mean nothing if we, ain't, if we ain't good to his people. You know what I'm saying? That's his people. That don't, you know, a lot of people don't know nothing better to be by to. And we were having conversations last night. You know, that gentleman sound, you know, sound wise and all that stuff. In some ways, he is wise. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you just have young, young, impressionable people that don't know as much. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that fall victim to, 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 to crafty words. You know what I mean? So that, our heart got to just be to first cut that stuff out. Stop these people in they darn tracks. You know what I'm saying? And give, give people another choice. Give people something else to choose. If they don't choose, that's fine. You know what I'm saying? We know, we already know, we already know what number game we in. Book only say 10% most of the time. At best, it'll say a third. 
You know what I'm saying? Usually when it says third, it's talking specifically to already people who look at God. You know what I'm saying? You look at the whole world. You know what I'm saying? That thing, you know the number is low. You know what I'm saying? So that's cool. We understand the number game we in, but we still want to make sure we put ourselves out there to make sure we uh, uh, we, we give people an understanding if they want it. You know what I'm saying? If they're looking for it. But this is, uh, this is uh, Psalm chapter, chapter 73, verse 1. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps well had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the posterity of the wicked. Uh -huh. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Right? You don't think that's how we felt? We in Egypt. We sitting there. I mean, we, we doing our thing. And then all you see is all these Egyptians starting to come up and rise. And, and they putting us over all this hard bondage. And they oppressing us. It just seemed like God ain't even getting these folks. All right? Keep going. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Right? We sitting there plagued. We in trouble. But all these people living wrong. They, they, they live, living, excuse me, they living fine. Right? We see it today. Right? All these people just living fine. We out here oppressed, doing bad, hurt, struggling, just to be all right. Right? Keep going. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Uh -huh. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. Uh -huh. They speak loftily. Uh -huh. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walks through the earth. Uh -huh. Therefore, his people returns here and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Uh -huh. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Right. They looking like man, ain't no God. God ain't going to know nothing. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? Ain't no knowledge in the most high what I'm going to learn. You know what I'm saying? What are you going to know? Keep going. That's what these wicked people are running their mouth and they thinking. That's what they heart thinking. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. They prosper and they increase in riches. It's the psalmist telling us this stuff. These people, they wicked and they still get by. That's what he's running their mouth saying right now. Watch this. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in, in innocency. He said, I turned myself, I turned to be righteous for no reason. Right? I'm living right for no reason. Clearly, that's what he's saying. Clearly, I'm living right for no reason. Because I turned from my sin and these people still doing good. I'm out here doing bad. Right? Watch what we say next. Though. For all the day long have I been plagued and chast chastened every morning. Right? These people still chide me. These people still hate me. These people still don't show, don't show no support, don't show no love, right? Only thing we out here doing the right thing, right? That's how he looking. He looking like, oh man, whole world still against me. I ain't did nothing but the right thing. I ain't, we ain't did nothing but tell people, you know what? Don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your husband. You don't, you don't need to be cussing. Don't lie to nobody, right? We're wrong. But these people that tell you whatever they feel like telling you, whatever they feel like telling them to you, oh yeah, that's the one, right? They still doing good. They out here, we teach people the, the bare truth about us being Hebrews for free, right? These people out here taking your money, spending your money, and teach you some lies, that thing acceptable. And they doing well. They traveling on your dollar. Right? And we look at it, we look at it like, Oh, sure. Uh, barely. We like the psalmist. Barely I'm doing this thing for vain. Barely this thing ain't got no point. Obviously, that's how a lot of us fall. Right? That's how a lot of people who would be righteous, that's how they fall. They're looking like, man, obviously I'm doing this thing in, in vain. Right? I can tell this one lie, and immediately the money will start coming in. Immediately. I'll get the the, 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 satis the satisfaction that I want. Satisfaction. Gratification. Gratification that I want. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Watch this next verse, though. Remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old. He said, Most High God, remember us. Remember that congregation that you purchased of old, Most High God. The rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed. Remember the rod. You redeemed us, Lord. Remember us. 
Let's see. This Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt. Uh-huh. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations, even all that the enemy has done wickedly in the sanctuary. Uh-huh. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. They set up their ensigns for signs. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. But now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes That's good. and hammers. We in the wrong place. What'd you read? Wait, hold on. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, that thing's good. I'm going to keep going. That thing was good. If I say I will speak thus, okay, we're on 7315. Right? Sorry, go back to the last verse so we can read back into it. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastised every morning. Uh huh. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. Right? He said, if I say I should speak thus. In other words, what I just got done talking about, right? If I say that, man, I did this thing in vain. I'm being right in vain. He's like, you know what? I mess around and offend the rest of y'all children. He said, let me get back to my right mind. This thing ain't in vain. Watch what he say next. When I thought to know this, I, it was too painful for me. Uh huh. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Right? He said, then I went to the sanctuary of the Most High God. Most High God taught me. I understood after that. The second time I read the book with an understanding, when I read this song, I was like, man, this thing was hit. Love this thing. I remember this one. Love this thing. Watch what he said. He said, man, I said, I was running my mouth at first. I was thinking that way. Then I went into the sanctuary of the God. Then I understood. After I did that, then I understood. What you understand? Surely thou did set them in slippery places. You did what to him? Set them in slippery places. He said, all these boys are set up. You think they're doing something? All of them is set up. Y'all follow them out there if you want to. He said, blind lead the blind. Both of them don't fall into a ditch. Y'all here just trying to help people. Y'all follow these folks if y'all want to. Keep going. Thou castest them down into destruction. Uh-huh. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? He said they brought into a desolation in what? As in a moment. What do you think happened when we came up out of Egypt? Grab Exodus for me. Grab Exodus 14. They think this man is a joke. Most I got don't play that stuff. We've seen all this stuff play out before. How long do you think we was in Egypt? We was in Egypt at least 200 something years. A lot of people say 400. We'll talk about that one day. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to get into it today. Yeah. But we was, in there, we was in there at least 200 some years. Right? You think in that 200 years that we were sitting in there that people wasn't getting tired? We wasn't sitting here like, man, this stuff needs to stop. People wasn't feeling, feeling exactly like the beginning of that song was feeling. Like, man, these people just prospering. We just being, being beat down. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody doing nothing for us. Of course they ain't feeling that way. What, you think they're going to give up? Some of them probably did. Right? In their lifetime, they didn't see no relief. What that mean is over because they didn't see the relief? No, nah, most High God coming. You ain't got to worry about that. And when he comes, somebody getting dealt with. Watch this. This is uh, Exodus chapter 14. Give me verse 21. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. How you, how you make a whole whole ocean, whole, whole, whole body of water just go to be dry land so we can walk through? I ain't never seen nothing like that. Keep going. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. What was on the side of it? And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. On the sides, the water just looked like a nice little wall. You probably see fishes. Look, ain't that how it was on the movie? <laughs> on the movie, you see the little fishes swimming through. You saw the whale. They just lost their mind. You probably, probably did see something like that, though. You know what I'm saying? Just walking through, just going through. Like, man, what in the world? You ain't never seen no such. Probably scared out of their darn mind. Like, hurry up, get across the thing before it closed up on us. Watch what happened, though. And the Egyptians pursued and went. Even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. Uh-huh. And then what happened? And it came to pass that in the morning which the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians uh -huh. through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians mm -hmm. and took off their chariot wheels and they drave them heavily mm -hmm. so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto 
waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their children. Uh-oh. Most I got put them in a slippery place, all that water. It's a setup. Go back. Go back. This is uh, Psalm 73. What verse was that? It's Psalm 73. Give me verse 19. Watch this. I just want y'all to see what he said. Y'all just tell me if I'm lying or not. Tell me if he's lying or not. This Psalm 73, verse 19. Are thy brought into desolation as in a moment? Give me 18. Surely thou didn't set them in a slippery places. He didn't set them in a slippery place. All that water, he didn't set them in a sleeper, slippery place. But they put right in a slippery place. Then watch what else happened. Thou cast them down into destruction. Uh huh. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? How, how, how long do you think that thing happened? Close that water on them right there. He ain't have enough time. It wasn't long enough for them to get away from it. We would have kept on reading. That thing said their body was on the shore. You got a lot of people that. A lot of scientists would be like, no, we expect to find bodies of the Egyptians on the bottom of the sea floor, and that's how we would know that it happened. I said, you obviously didn't read the book. The book said their body was on the shore. They washed up the shore. How they gonna how they gonna just float to the bottom? Right? They washed up on shore. Yeah, even dead, all dead bodies, they float. Yeah, hey, y'all seen them movie? You know what I'm saying? You see the baby, you know what I'm saying? You see the body going, you know what I'm saying, on the beach? You know what I'm saying? That's where they gonna go. God watch movies too. He knew where to put them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Grab a, uh, grab a, uh, what were we at, Exodus? Let's, yeah. go back, let's go back to Exodus, right? Because it's all about, at the end of the day, all the people, all the people is in the same position. We all oppressed. We all looking for relief. Same thing that's happening now. We have to be able to be patient and wait for things to happen. You know what I'm saying? When Moses, when Moses came up out of there, you don't think he is patient? He had to wait. All the people, we all had to be patient. Some of us wasn't patient. Right? And the most high God going to deal with us that's not patient. But we got to be patient and wait for these things to happen. Being patient don't mean that we we patient with our righteousness. Right? Books say today. Right? Being patient don't mean that we patient with what we demand of one another. That we demand the love of the most high God from one another. Right? They ain't what being patient about. Being patient is being patient with God. The promises that he made. Trusting that he's going to follow through. Right? Otherwise, we'll find ourselves lost. Grab, grab uh, James for me. James will break it down for me better than I can. Just James chapter 5. Give me verse 7. James chapter 5, verse 7. Watch what he says. All this information in the book, and we just lay it to the side. Just so we can hear somebody else talk. And they ain't even teaching us the book. They teach me the book. Teach me what it say. Teach me how to understand it myself. You got to prove to me what it say. There's too many liars that deal with this book. It's crazy to let somebody walk up and tell you anything. I ain't never seen nobody have no doctor just come. I mean, they go to a doctor and just, I mean, doctor ain't got no darn credentials. And let, you, and let him prescribe you something. You ain't never heard of the medicine either. Your butt just going to take it, huh? Lost your darn mind. This book got way more pages than any doctor book. And all these medical books they got. They're going to have to make a couple medical books to equal up with all the information in this thing. They roll with that, though. That's crazy. This is James chapter 5, verse 7. And unto the coming of the Lord, uh -huh. behold, the husbandman waits for the precaution, for the precious fruit of the earth, uh -huh. and has long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Uh -huh. Be ye also patient, establish your heart near. Uh -huh. Ye be condemned. Behold, the judge stands before the door. Take my brother in the for an example of suffering. Right? We're going to have to suffer a affliction and a patience. He said, look at, look at my brother and the prophets. You know what I'm saying? That's an example. The, the, the prophets got to be an example for us. One of the prophets was Moses. You thought that thing was rosy for Moses all the time? No, it wasn't rosy. When Moses came on the scene, the people didn't even mess with him right away. Right? 
And the most I got to grab, uh, grab Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter, no, uh, not 2. Exodus chapter uh, 5. Right, Exodus chapter 5, give me verse 1. Watch what happened when Moses came on the scene. Moses, Moses spoke to God in the mountain. God appeared to him in the bush. You know what I'm saying? Gave him his marching orders. But Moses, you know what I'm saying? He thought he was like, this is what's up now. You know what I'm saying? God built up his confidence. He was a little scared at first. God built up his confidence. He was like, all right, for sure, we can do this. So he went out there. Most high God told him to take his brother Aaron. You know what I'm saying? His older brother Aaron. So Aaron, you know what I'm saying? He said he's going to do the talking for him. But Moses ready. He feel like he got what he need. He out there. He go holler at Pharaoh. Watch this. This is uh, Exodus chapter 5. Give me verse 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Uh-huh. And Pharaoh said, Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. Like Pharaoh looking like, Man, I don't know no Yah. Who is Yah that I should, I should believe him? That I should hear his voice. Why are you coming to me talking about some God I don't know? I can't see him. He's like, man, what you talking about? Imagine that. I'm the king of this nation. I'm right, I have an empire. There's nobody anywhere near me that can mess with me. And you're going to walk. You got the audacity to walk up to me talking about y'all told me to tell you to let my people go. You lost your darn mind. Get out of here. All right? Watch with the Pharaoh. Look at the Pharaoh. You can't even be mad at the Pharaoh. The audacity of this man. Come up here and tell me somebody named Yah told me I should let his people go. Lost your darn mind. Watch this. I know not the Lord, neither will he said, I... I don't know nobody named Yah. What else? Neither will I let Israel go. He said, I ain't letting nobody go. Y'all lost y'all darn mind. What else? Then they said, the God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three uh -huh. days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Uh-huh. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Aaron, let the people from their works get you into your burdens. Right? So he is looking at, he is looking like, I ain't got time to be listening to all this stuff. Y'all spending a whole bunch of time. Y'all, y'all taking the people away from their work. They got work to do. Y'all be here talking, talking about let the people go. He's like, get them back to y'all burdens. Y'all get back to y'all work. Y'all killing time right now. Why are y'all bothering them? Right? Watch this. Keep going. And Pharaoh said, behold, the people of the land now are he make them rest from their burdens. Uh huh. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, "Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick." He said, as "Don't give them no straw no more." What else? As heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, "Let us go and sacrifice to our God." Right. So to understand what he said is, he is like, y'all job is to make bricks, right? That's one of the things they did. Usually, we provide the straw, you know what I'm saying? And y'all make the bricks out of it. And let's say your quota is you got to have 20 bricks a day, right? So you make your brick, we'll give you the straw to make the brick great, right? He said, oh, since y'all got so much time in y'all heads to come to me talking about let y'all go, we're going to switch some things up. How about you use some of this extra time you got to make your own darn bricks, right? Make the bricks, pick your own darn straw, and uh, I still need my 20. I still need you to meet the exact quota I told you to meet before, but now on top of what you were doing before, go get your own straw and make your own bricks and then bring them to me. Since y'all got so much time to be talking about uh, let my people go to me. Talking about some yacht. Right? Pharaoh just sitting there, he's like, I ain't got time for none of this stuff. So he laid down the law. Right? So now you have to look at it from the people's position. Right? Moses come in. Right? Moses left. Moses come back. Right? Moses come in. He like, yo, let my people go. Everybody kind of like, all right, let's see what, let's see what Pharaoh going to say. You know what I'm saying? You can mad. Everybody just stop. You know what I'm saying? You working. You see Moses actually do it because you've been hearing about it. It's been talking around town. Moses going to talk to Pharaoh. Man, that boy crazy. You know what I'm saying? That boy, I don't know what's wrong with him. You know what I'm saying? Other people, well, I'm going to talk to you. I think it might work, though. I, I believe it. Some people believe. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't. And be like, you know what I'm saying? You, you find out he actually talked. 
Everybody stop working. Let's see what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what he's going to say. So everybody just crowd around. He just imagine everybody crying around. They just watching him. You know what I'm saying? What's going to happen? You hear a fair response. Hey, okay. Since y'all got so much time and y'all can watch what's going on, go ahead and keep same quote with the brick. Go pick your own straw. No, no, no. Taskmaster. Don't y'all give them no more darn straw. They got to pick their own darn straw. And I still need my 20 bricks. Now let's see what y'all do with all y'all free time. Right? Watch how the people react to that. Jump down to, uh, jump down to uh, verse 15. Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, They cried unto God? Pharaoh. They cried unto Moses? Pharaoh. They went directly to Pharaoh. What they say? Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? Uh huh. There is no straw given unto thy servants, and they say to us, Make brick. And behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. Uh huh. But he said, You are idle. He said, Look, Pharaoh said, No, nah, you got time on your hands. That's what idle talk. He's like, You got idle time on your hands, right? You idle what? You are, you are idle. You are idle. Therefore, you say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Hey, yeah, you got enough time to tell me. I need to let y'all go, right? Yeah, that's why they whooping your butt. They whooping your butt because you need to make my bricks. Right? They whooping your butt because now you got to pick your own straw. Since you got so much time to be getting together with Moses, talking about you need to go. Talking about some yah. What I know about a yah? Right? Keep going. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you, yet shall you deliver the tale of bricks. He said, deliver the tale of bricks. He's saying, you still, get, you still getting the same quota, in other words. You're going to have to do the same quota. When I, used to, when I was doing the, doing the straw for you, you know what I'm saying? That thing was hard. Let's see how hard it is for you to make the same number, and you got to get your own straw. You ain't got no free time now. I take care of all that idle time you got. That's what, that's what Pharaoh was talking about. Watch this. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case after it was said. Uh-huh. You shall not mean, you shall not diminish aught from your bricks of your daily task. Mm -hmm. And they set, and they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way, and they came forth from Pharaoh. And what they said to Moses. And they said unto them, the Lord look upon you and judge, because you have made our, our, save, our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hands to slay us. Right? People didn't like Moses no more. You mess with Moses. You thought it was all peachy for Moses? Moses, how, how you think Moses feels? God, God hype him up real nice, you know what I'm saying? Nah, don't worry about it. I'm going to rescue the people, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to be the vessel that do it for me. You know what I'm saying? God talking to him. listen, I'm going to let you do these miracles. People are going to believe you after you do that. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, all right, for sure, you know what I'm saying? He finally get convinced, let me go ahead and do this. He start walking up, that thing did not go as it, as it planned in his mind. You know what I'm saying? He walk up, that thing did not happen the way he expected it. Pharaoh was having none of it. Put, made it worse on the people. Remember, Moses' mind, we didn't read it, but before, Moses, Moses, he was, he was, uh, he was, he was adopted by the Egyptians. Right? So you gotta imagine, this slavery is happening. You got one little slave that gets adopted by the, you know what I'm saying, like a house, a house slave, but the better than a house slave. He treated like a child. Right? He come out and he see his people suffering. He ain't fake though. You know what I'm saying? He ain't like he ain't like somebody that's gonna be like Zar. Is that Zar? Oh, he he ain't fake though. You know what I'm saying? He ain't like somebody that's gonna be like you know what I'm saying. Uh, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, that that they ain't mine. They ain't me. Moses came out. He saw his people oppressed. He is like, man, what's going on here? He ended up killing one of the Egyptians. Right? He killed him and ran off because one of the Egyptians was messing with his brother. Right? He went up to the people. He is like, man, why y'all fighting against each other? Right? He didn't like our people fighting. So Moses was a real one, even though he wasn't raised necessarily as a Hebrew. Right? He was raised with the, with the Pharaoh. He was a real one. He knew who he was the whole time. His mama raised him up still in the Pharaoh's house, but his mama still raised him. Right? When Moses got drawn out of the water, you know what I mean? They was looking like, go find me his mama. They found his mama, so his mama nursed him. Right? So they taught him. He knew who he was. And he, he held on to it. So he came out. Remember, his heart was for his people. He killed an Egyptian for his people because his people was oppressed. Then he ran off when he came back. That didn't, that didn't change. 
we look at that, that's something that God can work with. We talking about, you let these Christians tell it, Moses was a murderer. God, God can, God can bring you back from murder. And I ain't saying God can't. But don't try to make it look like God, I mean, uh, Moses murdered the same as these people murdered. Y'all murdering each other without even killing them. All this hate, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just hate on one another for no reason. Right? That thing ain't no different. Right? Don't, don't act like that thing is the same as what Moses did. Moses killed the man simply because he was, he was, he was fighting the oppression of his people. God said, I can work with that. Right? I can work with that. I can work with that heart. Right? You obey my word. I teach you some stuff. You obey my word. We can work with that. Right? There's a lot of people out here. God can't even work with that. Y'all gonna have to change a whole lot in your heart before God can work with that. Right? That's what we're trying to look at. Right? Moses had the heart for his people. So imagine him coming back. He, he, starts, he starts to follow through with this plan and it only adds oppression to his people. At that point, he like, man, all, now his people against him, the Pharaoh against him, and what are he going to do? Give up? Let's hear about it. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he has done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. All right, he looking at God like, man, what happened to the plan? Moses didn't fully understand the plan. Most of God know what he's doing. All we got to do is be patient. All right? After that, he told him, go back to Pharaoh. Then go back to Pharaoh again. And go back to Pharaoh again. All right? Eventually, Pharaoh started playing the hypocrite. Because all these plagues and all these wonders start coming against the land. All right? But the whole time, the Most High God is trying to humble Pharaoh. Pharaoh wasn't having it, though. Grab, grab uh, chapter, we'll be on five there. Give me chapter seven. In chapter seven, give me verse 20. All right, everything that would happen, the book would say his heart was hard. In other words, he was just like, I'm not having it. I'm not changing. Seven what? And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh. Watch what happened to him. And in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river uh -huh. were turned to blood. Right? All the waters were turned to blood at that point. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Right? So imagine seeing that. Right? Now our water ain't no good in Egypt. The Most High God was doing these things because he's trying to change the mind of Pharaoh. He's trying to humble Pharaoh. He's trying to show Pharaoh, you can't do nothing with me. All this rough talk you're doing, you can't do nothing with me. But he's doing it in steps, showing it to Pharaoh little by little. But Pharaoh is going to resist it. Watch this. And the, magicians, and the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So notice what happened. Pharaoh had his magicians try to replicate what God did, right? God turned the water into blood. So Pharaoh's magicians, they was like, well, we can do that too. So they do their little enchantment, and then they turn the water into blood, right? So when they look at it and that happened, they look, Pharaoh looking at it like, oh, man, I ain't going with that. So anybody can do that, right? Moses, that was tight. I thought that thing was tight. My magician can do that too. You good. Heart, heart. Right? That's what happened. That's why you see. That's why you see so many of these people when they look, they try to replicate what. That's how science is all built, right? The definition of science is 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 uh, what is the definition of science? Um, educated something through what do they do? Experiments or proof or something? Like that? I don't know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, what I'm saying? you got to be able to to experiment. You got to be able to replicate it to, yeah, to test it to improve, do it over again. Improve it, right? So you, for, for me, for it to be science, you know what I'm saying, you got to be able to say that, uh, you know what I'm saying, if, if Yahushua walked on water, for it to be scientific, somehow you have to be able to replicate that. So how can I make somebody walk on water again? Once I make somebody walk on water again, then I study how it happened, and that's the science, right? He's able to walk on water because at that exact moment, ice runs under the water, and then he's walking on top of it. Therefore, this is scientifically explained. 
Now, just tell me this. When something is scientifically explained, does that make it better? No. Who's the greatest person in the world right now? Greatest athlete. Who is the greatest athlete ever? Like Michael Jordan or something? Michael, let's go with Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan, greatest athlete ever. Who can do what Michael Jordan did? Kobe. Nobody, right? Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Let's use Kobe, right? Let's say Kobe. A lot of people fight against Kobe. If we say go, Kobe is the greatest, what are they going to say? You only got five rings. They're going to say that for sure, right? They're going to say Michael Jordan has how many? Six. They gonna say Kobe got all his moves from who? Mike. So because Kobe replicated Mike, Kobe is not as special. You know what I'm saying? Mike just did a little bit better. Therefore, Mike is the best because there's certain things that Kobe can't do that Mike did. In a lot of people's eyes, I still think Kobe could. Yeah, me too. Right? You know what I'm saying? But you look at it, and a lot of people just don't see it. So if you can't replicate something, that makes you greater. Right? That makes what you did special. But a lot of people, they will tell us, you know what? You know how I know God ain't real? Because you can't prove that he walked on water. Right? You can't prove that he did this miracle. You believe that? Well, that's what makes it special. It's the fact that you can't replicate it. They try to set us up, right? They try to put us in to prove it. To prove it, I'm going to have to try to replicate it. If I try to replicate it and I was successful, doing it, you wouldn't think it was special. You know what I'm saying? If I was able to replicate it like you want me to, then you would just be like, nah, anybody can do that. Right? Because I've seen it now. Anybody can do it. It ain't even special no more. Right? That's how the Most High God worked, though. The Most High God said, I'm going to show you something you ain't never seen. That's why That's why in the book it tell us, you know what I'm saying, if you go, uh, we ain't got to get it, but if you go to John, it'll tell us. You know what I'm saying? There's no way these people going to believe unless I do signs and wonders. Because now that's something nobody has done that before. That makes what you're doing special. All right? But we see that throughout the beginning of, of, uh, uh, of where these plagues are. Exodus 7, Exodus 8. You'll see he does a wonder. He does a sign. After that, they try to replicate it. You know what I'm saying? Once you replicate it, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. They keep going. So it's something else comes. Right? Grab, uh, grab Exodus 8 for me. Exodus 8, give me verse 16. You know what I'm saying? Exodus, he what? Snake on, uh, Exodus 8, verse 16. You know what I'm saying? First thing he did is he put, put a rod on the ground and it turned to a snake. The magicians, they duplicated that. They was like, oh, no, we can do that too. Then he turned, he turned the water into blood. The magician did their little magic. Oh, no, we can do that too. You know That's what I'm saying? Still was... yeah, the magician, that. like, really, like, replicated. They like, whoa. Yeah. And then you, then you, then you got, then you got the frogs. You know what I'm saying? The frogs was next. Sent frogs all over the land. Jesus was like, "Nah, we can send some frogs out too." You know what I'm saying? So all that stuff was replicated. Pharaoh's like, "Man, I ain't going with y'all little shenanigans." My, you know what I'm saying? My, my magician can do the same thing. Y'all ain't doing nothing special. Watch this. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, this is, uh Exodus chapter eight, verse sixteen. And the Lord said unto Moses, "Say unto Aaron, stretch forth, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt." And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and he became lice in man and in beast. Mm -hmm. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. Uh oh, they, the magician did so with their enchantments, and they tried to bring forth lice. And what happened? But they could not. They said they couldn't do it. So I want. I mean, when they can do it, Pharaoh just be like, "Yeah, all right." But when they can't do it, I wonder what they gonna say. Let's hear. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. They played God the glory. As soon as I can't replicate what you're doing, guess what? God get the glory. God know what he's doing. Don't let these people try to trick you into, you know, no, approve it. This, that, another. I ain't going to prove nothing. I'm going to prove what the book says. You prove that it's untrustworthy. You prove that all this history in this book is, is not real. And you prove to me that whoever you get your information from is more trustworthy than this, this thousand years old book. Yeah, okay. We keep moving then. These people will make a fool out of us if we let them. This is uh, Exodus chapter 9. Let's keep moving through. Right. Verse. 
13. Watch what he say here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people, that thou may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Uh -huh. For now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Mm -hmm. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up. For right, the show in the very deed for this cause have I, he talking to Pharaoh, have I raised thee up. He telling Pharaoh, this is the whole reason I, I made you who you is. Right? The whole reason why I made Egypt so great. All this thing, everything just popping for this one reason. So I can show all my power in you. Go ahead, watch this. For to show in thee my power, and that, that, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Uh-huh. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain very grievous hail, such, such as has not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Right? Grab, grab, watch this. Grab Exodus chapter 4. All this stuff got a purpose. You know when the book starts talking about purpose, it always got to tie back into Yahushua. Watch this. This is Exodus chapter 4. Alright? This whole thing was a back and forth. Plague would happen. Pharaoh would be like, uh, nah, nah. Heart hard and I'm good. And eventually Pharaoh was like, okay, okay, okay. Pray for me that all these, you know what I'm saying, lights will come off of the land and then I'll let the people go for a couple days, you know what I'm saying, to go make sacrifices. Don't take the children, you know, put little stipulations on them. You know what I'm saying? Then it come down to it, he like, nah, it ain't happening. Right, Moses will pray for him and be like, all right, life, come on back. You know what I'm saying? And after that, Pharaoh like, nah, nah, I changed my mind, right? So he would ask for prayer. He would ask for forgiveness. He would do all this stuff. The same thing he Christian do. Right? He would repent every day, right? Do, a, do the same thing, just sin, repent, sin, repent, sin, repent. He was doing that same thing. And then we were looking at it like, all right. We don't really understand what's going on. And God clarified it. He is like, all this is happening for this very purpose. That I can show my power. In. Right? But he told Moses that from the beginning. Moses probably didn't catch it right away. But he told Moses that from the beginning. It's Exodus chapter 4. It's a lot of things. Even as we read the book. We reading this book. If we have all the information right there, we don't be catching that thing right away though. You know what I'm saying? We get through, get through the book, get into some stuff in our life, then we read it again. He was like, oh, that's what that was talking about. You know what I'm saying? So no doubt when most God talking to any of us, including Moses, you know what I'm saying? He might not catch that thing right away. You know what I'm saying? Moses was freaking out with Pharaoh. You know what I'm saying? Pharaoh didn't accept what he was talking about the first time. Moses was like, man, what you talking about? What happened to you? You know what I'm saying? You, I, thought, I thought you were going to deliver the people. I was like, I was like, man, I told you. I just think we're going to play out. This is Exodus 4. Exodus chapter 4. Give me verse 18. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. Uh -huh. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses and Midian, Go, return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. Uh -huh. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. All right? So he told Moses, he like, I'm hardening his heart. He ain't going to let the people go. But watch this. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord Israel is my son, even my firstborn. He said, Thus says the Lord Israel is what? Is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. All right? Son don't differ anything from the servant. All right? He is like, let my son go, that he may serve me. All right? If not, I'm going to take your son from you. All right? So we see Israel as a son, talking about Yahushua. All right? The same story of Yahushua if you look at it. All right? If you look at Yahushua when he was young. To escape King Herod, where'd they go? Egypt. Went right into Egypt. Right? Egypt had hard bondage when we was in Egypt, right? 
That's his son. Right? He had to work hard. What was his occupation? He was a carpenter. Hear me, Mark chapter 6. Just so they don't think I'm lying. Yeah, he is a carpenter. He's a carpenter. Easy work? This is Mark chapter 6. Give me verse 1. Mark what? Mark chapter 6, verse 1. It's Mark chapter 6, verse 1. Watch what he said. And, when he, and he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. Uh -huh. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, From where has this man these things? Uh -huh. And what wisdom is, it, is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Uh -huh. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary? Right, he said, ain't this the carpenter? Ain't this man that carpenter? I mean, from a young age, that man was working. He had a reputation. He had hard work. What do you think? You think the book was in there? He a carpenter for no reason, just putting it in there? He had to show that he had hard work. He had to work hard. That thing wouldn't make sense. That's how, that's how we were when we were in Egypt. As God's son. We had to work hard. Then most High God bring us out of there, what did he do? Baptize us. What do you think it was when they went through the water? It was the baptism. That book for that. We can go to 1 Corinthians 10 for that. We ain't even got to grab it. 1 Corinthians 10, they're going to tell you. Don't you know that when they passed through the water in the cloud that they were baptized on the Moses? Right? Y'all sure the same thing. As soon as he jump up out, he, he, he go to John the Baptist. John the Baptist baptized. As soon as he jump up out the water, what happened? This is my beloved son. Yep. That's, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And then right after that, what happened? Uh, he went into the wilderness. Went into the wilderness. What do you think happened to us? He went into the wilderness. <laughs> How many years we go there? Forty. How many days he's in the wilderness? Forty. He's in there forty days. We is in there forty years. When he is in the wilderness, what happened to him? He was tested. When we are in the wilderness, what we do to God? Tested. When we was in the wilderness, what did we have to eat and drink? Manna and water. Before that? None. We was out there fasting. What do you think he was doing when he was in the wilderness? Fasting. Book said with no water, no drink. <laughs> Whole thing. That was his son. We think anything about us suffering. This other thing was about his son. His son had to come out. Had to go into the wilderness. He had to learn to live by by the word of the most high God only. That's something, that's a lesson we didn't learn in the world. We're gonna talk about it. That's a lesson that we didn't learn in the world. Grab Exodus chapter 17. Let's get up out of here. This is Exodus chapter 17. Give me verse 1. I just want you to see how the people tempt them. Make sure you, you know what I'm saying. Make sure y'all know. Old book line up. Old book is about him. He said, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. But they are they that testify of me. And he go on to say that you won't come to me to have life. Matter of fact, grab, uh, we ain't even got to get it. Yeah, grab John chapter 5. Lo, I come. He said, some light stuff. What did you say? He said, lo, I come in a volume of, of the book. The volume of the darn book. This is John chapter 5, give me verse 39. Chapter 5, 39? Yep. 
Search the scriptures, for uh -huh. in them you think you have eternal life, uh -huh. and they are they which testify of me. Uh-huh. But what happened? And you will not come to me that you might have life. Uh-oh. Why not? I receive not honor from men. He said, I don't receive honor from men. But I know you that you have not the love of God in you. Mm -hmm. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. That's the book there. He said, I come in the Father's name. And I come in the Father's name, y'all don't want to hear that. We read the book, y'all don't want to hear that. We told it to you just like it said, that thing ain't instant. Somebody come in their own name, get to running their, saying their own words, telling you what stuff mean, and they ain't got no, they can't prove it. Y'all want that though. Read it. Read that part again for me. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Warning is out there. Warning is out there. It's all up to us. We can look at it. We can, we can let these people make a fool out of us, or we can turn to the Most High God and we can serve him right. You ain't going to serve him right. You might as well don't even kill time. What you pretend for? There's a whole lot of stuff you can be doing out here as a sinner. You can get a whole lot of money as a sinner. There's a whole lot of ways you can get money as a sinner. What are you going to say here? I mean, what you after in life? If you after God, then you got to serve him right. If you not after God, why pretend and make it look like you after God? Unless you're going to, I mean, if you're going to do it, you know what I'm saying? You better get, you, you better figure out a way to like live it up. What are you going to do when you still broke? You giving, you giving somebody else all your money. Just to be a sinner and look like you're not a sinner to somebody? You sure ain't fooling me. You definitely ain't fooling God. No, I'm just saying, that thing don't make a whole lot of sense to me. If you're going to sin, you better live it up. Other than that, let's serve the Most High God the way he, he told us to. Let's pray out.